Once again, I'm sitting here on the bed. You're laying back with AIX. Close the door so we can get a little bit more personal here. Now, this next 30 minutes, I'm going to bust your gums by talking shit to you about the situation. Now, once again, I tell you fools that these protesters are out there protesting for nothing. No reason. No good cause. No good cause gets you nothing. So they're out there protesting again, and now they've been swept from the park by several different police forces. And now they say that this is... Damn, TV's too loud. There we go. So the park was surrounded this morning in Oakland. They shut them down. And it was a multi-police force, task force from several different agencies and blah, 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 blah. Was this training for the other agencies? This cost $500,000 to evict some people camping. That cost the city of Oakland a hell of a lot more. You know what I mean? $500,000 to tell British people to move is ridiculous. And once I said that, you know, these protesters will never get nowhere because they have too many causes. They're not structured. They're not actually doing anything but ticking people off and pissing people off in several states. And I said this. And they're cracking down today on all of these people. Shutting them down. And why is that? It's because they overstayed their welcome. They protested for a cause, without a cause, for no cause. You get it? All they have accomplished is, okay, America has problems. We already knew that. America has a lot more homeless people than they thought. Now we know that. So, looking at all these situations in different towns and cities and stuff in, in Penn State, it's bad. We constantly go through crap as the 95%. I'm not going with that 99% bullshit. You know, oh, only 1% of the people benefit. No, you'd have to be stupid to believe that. 5% of the people benefit very well off the bullshit we go through. Five. You know. So, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I pointed out something to my buddy that the American protests are fake. The Occupy protest is fake. It's a, a brew, a ruse, a distraction. Just like the Conrad Murray case, just like Penn State, we're being distracted. They knew this man was doing this all this time, a long time ago. Why has it come out now? So you can turn your head and look at Penn State. So you can turn your head and look at the campers. So you can't pay attention to what's going on. That's what's really going on. I'm not Alex Jones. I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. I call it like I see it. Just like I see it. Every time I see it, I call it exactly how I see it. We get dumped on. We get shit on. And yuppies go camping. And nothing gets done. There's no one tearing up the streets of San Francisco like they did in Libya. I said it. Triple E. There's nobody tearing up America like they did in that Arab Spring. And I want you to understand that this is the United States of America. Each state is a country within its own. Did you know that? They're united. Based on the Constitution or whatever and all that bullshit, what have you. Did you know the District of Columbia is exactly what it is? 
a district of Columbia? Think about your country, idiots. Why would you have the capital of the United States of America in the District of Columbia? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, but it's in the United States. It's the District of Columbia. Each state is a country within itself. I gave you a little clue here on how to occupy the United States of America. In a battle, a war, you would like some guy to think he can out strategize you. You would like the guy to say, well, we can flank him over there and we could do this over here. And we can go over there. You would like a guy to want to divide and separate you. Do you think he got you that way? His troops are united and yours are divided. The United States of America. Several different countries united by the Constitution. State of California doesn't need the rest of the United States of America. New York probably wouldn't need the rest of the United States of America either. Texas probably would not need the rest of the United States of America. If certain key states broke away from the United States of America, what if Texas became part of Mexico? If California went back to Mexico for better uh, taxes. Well, you join Mexico. Fuck it. Better tax break. What if other states became part of Canada? So on. And so forth. What if Alaska became part of Russia? What if? We live in a world based on what ifs. What if? What if we were all treated equally? What if? Hmm? What if? What if these people were out here camping camped at the stock exchange. What if they wouldn't get a chance to shut down the stock exchange? If you want to hurt the people who you think do you wrong, you have to hurt them the way they hurt you. But the thing is, the way they hurt you, you can't hurt them because they can wait you out. Life itself is almost like a game of poker. If I got forty billion dollars and I'm sitting here and we're all putting up five or six dollars at a time, how long you think I'm gonna be playing poker at the table with a bunch of people who only got thirty or forty dollars? Use your brain. So the only way you can defeat them is not to use their money. To make their money obsolete. You get it? All those other countries. You know, they switched, they changed to the euro. And when they changed to the euro, who got cut out? Guys who had the rubles and, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, rocks or whatever, I don't know. Somebody got cut out when they switched from whatever currency they had to euros. Think about it. The American corporation system wants you to switch to credit cards and plastic. The good old way was hard cash. Cash was the closest thing we had to gold. Because cash, you could hold it, you could see it. Credit, the invisible money, the money based on promises. Credit is money based on a promise. I'm going to give you a thousand dollars if you pay me back seventeen hundred dollars. That's insane. I really need that thousand dollars. And that seven hundred dollars is what the next person is going to borrow from. 
that invisible money, because you only borrowed that thousand. You didn't borrow seventeen hundred. So by the time the loan is over, there's an extra seven hundred dollars. It's not extra. It's blood money. That's extortion. That's a promissory note. That's the new funds they want. They want you to be able to promise somebody you can do something for them and make it happen. That is your worth, your credit. What are you worth? You worth a thousand dollars? Forty thousand dollars? Four hundred thousand dollars? Four million thousand dollars? Forty million thousand dollars? <laughs> I was stupid. You like that 40 million times. But now, think about it. How can you hurt the rich if they can sit at the table and outweigh you? Make their money obsolete. Make their money worthless. How can you make their money worthless? Drive the value of their dollar down. How can you drive the value of someone's dollar down when it's in their pocket? Remove the controls in which that person has. One at a time. So if the person is dominating media, don't buy his shit. Don't watch his channels. Shut him down. Don't watch his news channels if you know his news is only being the news that he wants you to hear. You have to play the game in which the devil... It, the devil gives you the rules. That's the, the bottom line. And the snake will tell you his plot. And the villain will tell you their plot. The key to being a smart enough individual is to understand the plot. If the plot is to control and divide people, how you break that up? If we're going to be destined to be lemmings, if we're going to follow every lead and understand what we're following, the Bible says... Don't uh, cherish her. What is it? Don't uh, something about false idols. Think about the Bible in itself. The religious relic changed in order to suit certain people. King James version. What about the Alonzo Hayden version? Would you buy that? Would you buy the the Charlie Sheen version of the Bible? Would it become church doctrine. You know. Thou shall snort if thy has the bag. Um, it's ridiculous. And we choose to go camping. The American Occupy Movement is a fake. And it's the proof is in the pudding. When the Arab Spring jumped off, America wasn't doing shit. Obama was getting foot stuck to the ass. Osama had to die. <laughs> Osama. You know, ratings went up. Dancing with the stars. You know, Kim Kardashian. Casey Anthony. All distractions. Because everyone's life is more important than my own. So I'd rather watch theirs in which I was some part of it other than my own. We live our lives through TV screens, computer screens, text messages, social networking, all to mask a reality. Because in these fake worlds, we can be happy. In reality, we have bet debts, you know, bills, uh, you know, family drama, all kind of shit like that. That causes us not to pay attention to the big picture. And every time I do this a certain way, it gets crooked. Look, I don't want a crooked one. Mm -hmm. A little spike there at the bottom. I'll fix it later. Who gives a shit? I don't care. So listen. We gotta. We always try to be fashionable. 
I got to wear this brand new shirt. I got to we always fall into what someone else tells us we need. Not caring about what we really have to have. Not giving a damn about what we really want. There's an image in which we all strive to live up to. And that is not the image of a human being. It's the image of a successful human being. You can't be yourself because you want to be the successful person you see on TV. Who told you what success is in the first place? But, in order to get our points across, we choose to go camping. They turn over cars in the streets to overturn the country. We hang out at a park, go camping. Drain the resources of the police. Criminals aren't camping. You know. We protest for 1,500 million different reasons and no one's paying attention to the one reason we should be protesting. The financial one. Because if everything is based on money and we don't have any. If everything is based on jobs and we don't have any. We live in a financial situation because if you don't have the money the cash, the lifestyle, no one will have the time for your ass. We live in a world where when people go to church, they got to dress up like fucking peacocks. God don't give a damn what you wear when you go to church. What the fuck you need all the jewelry and the flashy clothes for? You think it's going to be a, a better seat on the bus to heaven if you got new clothes on? So when you look at <clears throat> what we really need in life, we need not be envious of one another because that's what stops us from beating those people out of the ivory towers. They put forth an image that we must strive to be, an image that they will make sure we can never be because they've already reached that status and have locked the door. This is not something they which they created. This is something which they inherited. The average human being only lives like 70 years. And that just went up according to those doctors in which they have hired to tell us what we are and what we are not. When you look at the man, is he white? Is he black? Is he from the District of Columbia? Where is the man from? Who is the man? The man is actually a system of men. Men of which we had a dream to be emboldened and empowered. Probably a bunch of poor slobs who had foots wrapped up their asses for years. They said, I will never be that again. You will never step on me or my family again. And they rose up. And them and their friends and those like them started something. As time goes by, and everybody knows, every civilization rises and falls based on power and greed. So we, as a species, must understand that it's time for the great downslide. Because those of power have got to the point that their greed has overwhelmed their power. And absolute power is what they want. They want humans as puppets. We're already fuel cells, batteries like the Matrix. The more batteries they have, the more money they can make off the batteries. The more promise this guy's going to earn this much in his lifetime. And then think about it. The money we pay taxes in our taxes, that's based on what we're going to earn in a lifetime. If they don't put you in a position to have an education and get anything, then they don't expect you to live long at all anyway. So if they don't expect you to live long at all, why in the fuck would they want you to be healthy? Why would they even care? If your average lifespan is 35 to 40 years and theirs is 50 to 70 to 80, 
And when you got money, some of those old shit bastards, they live till they're like 93 years old. And you're only going to live till you're 40. Think about it. You're only going to live till you're 40. Middle age is when you're 20 years old. Say you're only going to live till you're 50. Your middle age is 25 years old. They, the man, those who can, those in power, those with money, those with family bloodlines that go back 12 generations, 1861 and 1642. When you hear of somebody's family member from 1642 and they're still in fucking power, the family living good, that is the 1%. When you hear of a family that's been jumping since 1802, that's probably part of 2%. You see what I'm saying? If you hear of a family that's been kicking it since 1901, they're part of the top 5%. And everyone else eats shit. Understand what I'm saying. Look at how old the money is and how far it goes back. Then and only then you can find out who controls what. But until then, you're going to get your asses kicked at campsites by police from several different agencies. And some of these people may be from other countries testing, learning how to beat the shit out of Americans. The psychological warfare has been won. We are psychologically beat down. Technically, if you really want to hurt a bunch of Americans, you can put some little uh, crazy shit on some dollar bills and throw them out of the airplane. Everybody goes, ah, money, free money. And one more thing, people. Free is not always good. You don't see rich people going out and get free shit free shit is brought to them not the same free stuff you get you've, you've seen it on the Oscars you know they give away gift baskets $40,000 gift baskets at the Oscars to people who can afford it where's the logic in that when those baskets that they give out at the Oscars and all these award shows or swag baskets they call that could be turned into cash and given to homeless, not homeless people, homeless shelters or entities like that. But instead, they're not going to go occupy the Oscars. They're not going to occupy, the, you know, they're going to occupy the parks. But they won't occupy a state park. Why is that? They're going to occupy these little city parks and towns and stuff. That's weak. We strive to be the best we can every chance we get. We don't succeed when we clutter our message with sub messages, subtexts, drama, and plots that make no sense to nobody. People getting beat up, raped, and murdered. ODs. People are dying at these campsites. Why? Because everybody got 1,500 million different reasons to be there. There's no structure. If I'm protesting because of the racial issues that I face, that's not the same as this person over here protesting. And it all boils down to socioeconomic differences. It's all about money. So there should only be one reason to protest, and it's the financial disparity. Because if you were given the same opportunities with education, with finance, with housing, as some rich person's great-great-granddaughter, oh, that's Governor Fairbanks' granddaughter. She's good for the loan. Let this freshly out of college young lady get the four-bedroom house, three-car garage, dated community never worked a day in her life let her get the loan because her rich 
people were not going to let her down. So on and so forth with young men, black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter. If you got it, you make sure your kids keep it. That is the American way. You can't hate the top 1% for keeping a shit. You should hate them for not sharing it. Because too much is opulence. Well, they got this TV show, man. It's called Right This Minute. I don't like the show. Because they show videos off the internet that are you know, going through their thing. But I've learned since I've been on the internet, I've had a video go super viral. And I was getting death threats over it. I had that shit happen. Um, and then I was on the mainstream a little bit. Then I was pulled off the mainstream. It's why is that? And on this YouTube thing, I was in a group of people who liked wrestling. In the back, they used to have these sub-communities. They don't even have them no more. So I'm locked into a group of people, and half of these people are young kids now. I'm, I'm locked in some, some video game group where a lot of young kids play video games, and some of these kids are racist, calling them motherfucking like monkeys and shit. What am I talking about now? Why why do I go from the disparity to now somebody on the internet calling me a monkey? It's because they say the average money being made off the internet now is young white kids making money. I've been doing this for four years. I've been offered money on three or four different channels, and every time it gets ready to kick in for me to get paid, there's been a violation somewhere it happened. And then all of a sudden, do you really want to see somebody like me in the mainstream? I don't have no uh, logo come on before I come on. I can do that. I've done it in the past. You've all seen that. I try to be different for a reason. I try to talk to people regularly. I'm not outside. I'm not making fun of Britney Spears. I'm not. If I say something about anybody on TV or whatever these stars, it's because it's, it's you know that's the way I feel about them. Fuck them. They ain't doing shit for me. Why in the fuck should I idolize anything? Go back. Do what I said about the Bible. You shouldn't you know worship any false idols. But millions of people vote for the American Idol. They idolize these stars and villainize these other people and black guys are violent and white guys are child molesters and you know you got the little white women killing their babies and shit everybody's fucking negative and got a foot up their ass and you don't see these rich people you don't see rich people go through this shit you hear of a divorce you hear of maybe actor on drugs actor going shoplifting you don't hear these people going to jail for their crimes. Lindsay Hobang, she ain't going to jail. Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan, daddy, he's a gangster motherfucker. Jumping out of windows and shit, beating bitches. Excuse me, young lady. I'm just saying, speaking in ghetto. You're probably not some bitch. You know, you probably didn't deserve to get your ass whooped by Lindsay Lohan's dad. But it ain't my business. Once again, these are people with a little money. People can buy their way out of problems. It goes back to the disparity of cash funds. Old money versus young money. But we go camping for equal rights and equal pay. We occupy parks and cities. Occupy a state park, make a better place, make the park better than it was when you went in there. Occupy a state park. Occupy one of these state parks that they're threatening to close down. Occupy one of these state parks where they got foreign troops in practicing to get your asses. Because that's all this it is. You start a protest, you get a bunch of people out in the street for various reasons, and then you, you teach people how to handle crowd control. And that's exactly what's happening in America. You know, fake protests got people out there at arms because there are real people out there protesting. But it was started by some plants probably. And that's exactly how it is. We are stupid. We are dumb. We are chasing a dream. We are sleepwalking through reality. We are slaves. 
We are enslaved. We enslave. We are, well, what's the word I want to say? Anti-sexual in America. Everybody, ooh, huh. sexually oppressed country. We are a sexually oppressed country. We have rapists, murderers, dope fiends. America is a scarred picture of what it used to be. America is a twisted reality of what it set out to be. America is a slave pit. Because you come to America to pay taxes. You come to America to be enslaved. And if you're born here, then your life expectancy is short. You're not expected to be anything here. You're part of the core. You're nothing. You were born here in the 70s and 80s and 90s. You're nothing. Period. The last of the real Americans died off in the 50s. Or was it in the 30s when all the blacks were forced to leave California? You know? And didn't get to come back to California till after the war. Parts of history that's been completely forgotten. It's not because you locked the Japanese up in these camps. It's because you paid them. See what I'm saying? You paid the Japanese for the things that you've done to the Japanese, but you didn't pay the other people. You put the Indians on reservations. Now you've given them casinos and money. Because everybody wants to part of that dream, so they will throw their money into a chance to get some more back. And the blacks, well, you gave them hip-hop, crack cocaine, and the inner cities. And the whites, the ones that you dragged over here first, told them pilgrims you can have a better life. Infiltrate, destroy the Indians. You did what you did to these people. The experiment is almost over. And what do we do? We ride it out. We, the skinheads, the Ku Klux Klan, the Aaron Brotherhood, the Crips, the Bloods, the Norteños, the Serenios, the Blacks, the Black Panthers, Black Liberation Army. All these entities and all these groups of young people striving to better themselves in their situation, regardless of the racial implications, regardless of what these people believed and what these people thought, they were all thought to believe one thing or the other and never taught to believe that they could be united to face the 5%. So when you look at the big picture as an American, don't worry about what you look like or what the next person look like. Worry about the person that you cannot see that's right in front of you. That's telling you who you are and what you can and cannot do. Telling you how far you're going to go in your life, if you're going to survive or if you're going to sink. Those are the people who you have the problem with. And all you need to do is break the spider web by not voting for a millionaire. Change the laws in which bind you. Because they speak in riddles in which you don't understand the words to. When he talked in numbers, he did a 187 at a 285 at 115. You don't know how they speak, so you don't know how to speak to them. They control us by the laws in which we write to protect ourselves. Those laws in which you think will never apply to you always apply to you and will always be backed up by the 5%. Because they're not going to break these laws. And if they do, they have enough to buy their way out. They can sit at the poker table until the game is over. We're only putting 5 and $6 in every time. And when that guy says, all in, $55 billion, and you sitting there with fourteen hundred dollars, thousand. You can be sitting there with forty thousand dollars at the table. I'm all in, sixty-five billion dollars. My whole corporation jets everything, 
and you lose. You're not losing to the 1%. You're losing to old money. You're losing to those whose money has been around longer than your entire existence. And your kids and your mother and her mother's mother. You are looking at remnants from the Roman Empire. I said it. Ming Dynasty type motherfuckers are all up in here. You know, Anastasia's great grand people over in Russia. You're talking about an entity that is older than you, me, and what can we can perceive as time. These people are still in control. Caligula's great, 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 great grandfather is still in control. You know, Prince uh, Albert, King James, is still in control. Thank you. You have been sleeping with Lonzo. No, wait a minute. no, that's not what I'm going to call this. 30 minutes in my bed. No, wait a minute. Half hour fucking with me? No, wait a minute. This has been 30 minutes in my bed. No, wait a minute. You have been in my bed for 30 minutes. You've laid with me for a half hour. Wait a minute. Wait. I'm going to have to call this a half hour with Zex. Zex? No, a half hour with X, yeah. I need to get my... Um, there it goes. And no, this is not a Hitler video. Sorry. That's coming next week after somebody watches this one and has something negative to say. Then I'll trim this top off, make it easier so I have my little square there. Or maybe I'll just go at the dot again. But look, we've had this conversation several times. I don't know what I'd call a show when I talk for 40 minutes. 40 minutes in my house. I don't know. But the moral of the story is we won't get shit camping. You want to hurt their man. You hurt him in his pocket. Shut down a stock exchange. You shut down the ports. You want jobs. You lobby the countries that are spending money here. In other words, if we owe China a shitload of money, we should be asking China for some fucking jobs. Don't you think? If we're so beholden to Israel, maybe we need to ask Israel for some motherfucking jobs up in this bitch. Oh, I had to get a little ghetto on this. You know, I am black. I have to play for the stereotypes. Well, this has been 30 Minutes with X. I gotta go. I went over my 30 minute limit by 10 minutes. Okay, eight minutes. Okay, eight minutes and 24 seconds. There's a man out there called a white army. And he told me I should put some of these videos on Facebook. I don't like Facebook. Facebook has a facial recognition program. And I do not want to be considered somebody's terrorist. Because the things I have said in this video are considered terrorist. Because I'm talking about better in the country I'm living in. It's also to be construed as overthrowing the country. That's illegal. I'm not here to overthrow the greatest country ever created, even though it was made by snakes. I'm not here to overthrow this country. I want to drive. Let me drive it. Let me ride this motherfucker one time. Give me the keys to the United States of America one time. I can't do no worse than anybody else. Let me run it. Let me shut some of these corporations down. Let me tell these people, if you don't do for the people for the next 10 years, I'm going to tell them what you're doing. No, I wouldn't do that because they killed my ass. I ain't stupid. But I would. I would ask the people who control this ball to give us some of that Clinton love. Remember, Bill Clinton had motherfuckers going to work. And they complained Clinton had those jobs that weren't paying nothing. 
Give Americans jobs that don't pay nothing because nothing from nothing leaves nothing. And right now we ain't got nothing for nothing and we get nothing for it. $10 an hour is better than no dollars an hour. Some taxes is better than no taxes. So when Obama and the Republicans come out and say the America does not need those jobs that once were here, all I can say is, there should be five million asses right there for these motherfuckers to kiss a day till everybody's asses kiss because that's the damn lie we have to start off somewhere a ten dollar hour job helps you pay the fucking bills but see the problem is that's a low paying job. And America doesn't need those. So they all want those somewhere else. America needs any job. I said in the last video, Americans are chicken shit. Because we can't start over from the beginning. We can't start over from the beginning. Because our past costs too much. We're too busy paying for yesterday. To invest in tomorrow. We cannot start over at $7.35 an hour because we've worked here for seven months and it's time for a raise and they let you go. We can no longer continue to believe that you can pick up where you left off. You can't do it. It's impossible. So things must change. And the only way it's going to change, the only way it can change, is if you hurt people how people hurt you. And right now, we're only being hurt in one place. That's in our wallets. And like I said, we can't play poker with those who can afford to sit at the table. So we must make their money obsolete. To do that would be cutting your own hand off. But for them to back the banks and the banks not back the people, they already cut your hand off. Hey, you can always go camping.